The final pattern in our series tonight, I'm going to tie a spinner pattern. And again, I'll introduce uh, another whiting material. But this is a little mayfly spinner. I'm tying this with a, a split wing out of Guinea. I've got a real nice um, split tail on this, and I'll show you how I do that. Um, but the uh, little spinner pattern is an excellent imitation for the Calabatus spinner. Uh, the wing material is tied out of uh, a Whiting Farms guinea. Um, I pick a couple of feathers out of here to create that wing and split that wing. Um, now, Whiting Farms was raising guinea for a period of time, and about a year ago they had quite a bit left in stock. Uh, I know Tom, Dr. Whiting, has stopped raising guinea, uh, but they may still have some of those in stock. I'd have to check to make sure. But nonetheless, I use uh, a guinea feather. That um, Calabatus mayfly is known as a speckled mayfly or a speckled dun. And the speckling on um, guinea really comes across in tying this particular mayfly. It also does not float real well, so you've certainly got to goop it up. I don't have a hackle on this pattern to get it to float like uh, normal. And so um, give this one a try. It's also a really good pattern. I have kind of a neat story about it. I was up on Hosmer Lake one day. And uh, this is some years ago fishing for Atlantic salmon, and we had a really nice calabatus hatch start, and the fish were slurping them. And I cast out toward a rise form, and just about the time my fly hit the water, I heard a big splash behind me, and uh, turned around and here a bald eagle had dipped into the water and caught one of the Atlantic salmon that was feeding and flew over my head at about 15 feet. And as that eagle passed me by, all of a sudden my rod went down and I had a fish on. And it was on this particular Calabatus uh, spinner pattern. I've never forgotten that. And it's, it's one of those really special moments we get out um, fly fishing in our areas. Um, just one of those really cool moments. So the very last pattern in our Calabatus series is a Calabatus spinner. And I'm going to start by setting proportions on this fly. I want to leave that thread right where I want the wing to lay. So I've selected out two of my guinea feathers. And I'm going to go ahead and prepare these. I'm going to reach in about the length of the wing into the stem off the tip of this feather. And I'm going to trim those out. So you can see that little notch that I've got. Um, what that does for me, those, those uh, stems tend to get bound up and the they don't look quite right on this pattern as we tie it, so I'm going to eliminate those uh, when I tie this fly. So I've married up those two feathers, and I'm going to prepare them by very sharply pulling on the fibers to collect them together and pull them toward the, the uh, tip to create that wing. And I'll tie that in, wind several wraps over, and then I'm going to uh, align my scissors with the body and trim that off. And so I've got a little bit of a tapered uh, goiter on this one. And like I did with a deer hair, I'm going to go ahead and build a, a cone to set that those feathers straight upright. And then I'll reach in with my scissors and I'll manually split the wing into two. And I'll figure eight the wing 
with several wraps to begin to place it where I want it to be. Um, and so you can see that that's starting to emerge as a spinner. So the next thing I'm going to do is post each wing. And I'll go ahead and support the wing as I pass. And then do a locking wrap. And now I'll come to the near wing. And I'll post it with several wraps. And then I'll tie a locking wrap. And so that doesn't tend to unwind on me. And so you can see that real, real nice spinner wing that's developed out of Guinea that really gives this um, fly a nice, nice look on the water for that speckled calabatus done. So I'm going to use micro fibets for a tail. I could very easily tie this with my um, Coque de Leon, but I wanted to show another technique as we tie. And so let's proportion out that tail. I'm going to clip it off. I can kind of slide those wings out of the way so they, they don't get in my way at this point. And I'll tie that off. Now you notice as I'm tying these five bets on, I've lifted... I guess you probably can't completely see that, but I'm lifting and I'm using the thread to drive those five bets down to the hook shank. Um, the reason I do that is we want all those feathers or those five bets to align one next to the other next to the other. So when I split it, I can do a nice um, split. If they get cattywampus and don't lie consecutive on the hook, it can be a bit of a challenge to get these to lay right when I split them. And so now I've manually taken and put two five bets on the far side, two on the near side, and I've done a wrap in between. And now I'll come with more wrap, one more wrap in between, and a locking wrap in between each of those two wraps. And then I'll come with one underneath. And I'll give that one last little tug uh, to try and set that uh, tail in place. Now, if they're straying a little bit apart, and you, you can see very slightly these are, I'm going to cheat. Um, this is a little commercial tire trick that I use. I'm going to go ahead and coat the tail with... Uh, some of my UV resin and I'll spin it just slightly. A UV resin will cause that tail to uh, enjoin like this and you can see now they're they're straight and then I can just very quickly cure that and now I've got a nice firm set of mayfly tails out of my um, out of my micro bat so a little bit of a uh, a commercial tying tip uh, to help you tie better mayfly split tails I could do that with the coke de Leon but it it doesn't quite set as easily so let's tie on the biot make sure I've got that opaque side forward and the translucent side back and I'm going to tie that right back to the tail I want to avoid impacting that tail at this point in time um, with the biot and then we'll wind that right up to the wing set position And I'll put that in my hackle pliers and let's wind this biot forward. 
I'm going to wind right at that tail, but I don't want to do much to touch it. That little glue that I just put on, that super glue, I probably set it right adjacent to the tail, and I might have just very slightly touched the base of the tail, and that's going to seal that uh, tail uh, to have that outrigger shape that mayflies have. So now I've tied my biot. Let's grab some some of my uh, super fine and my UV dubbing and we'll pinch that onto the thread and I'm going to tie one wrap over just to catch a couple of tips and I'll spin that into a nice yarn and now I'm going to wind in between behind in between behind and then pull these wings back and make several wraps right into in front of those wings. And we'll whip finish here. And I'll put a second whip finish just because I'm not using any glue. And so two whip finishes are not going to come undone. I have found if you don't use glue around the eye of the hook, 99.9% um, .9 of the time you won't have glue in the eye of the hook when you go to tie your leader on uh, out in the evening during a, during a hatch. Nothing more frustrating than that. And so um, I've, I've stopped using a lot of glue up near the head for partially for that reason. So there's our Calabatus spinner pattern. Excellent little fly and one that really does a nice job for us. Um, this fly does not float real, real well. And so you definitely need to add some fly floating to it. Um, it doesn't have a nice hackle on it to uh, use the surface tension to support the fly. It's going to lie very low in the water like a spinner. Um, but it's a good little pattern and one I use uh, during a Calabatus spinner fall in our various uh, high cascade lakes. So that concludes our Calabatus life cycle series. I hope you've learned a little bit about uh, tying mayfly patterns, particularly the Calabatus mayfly. Um, it's an excellent little pattern for our Calabatus hatches uh, here in Central Oregon, but also throughout the United States. Um, I have tied a nymph. I've tied a soft hackle. I've tied a bad haircut pullover cripple. I've tied a Quigley style cripple. I've tied a parachute. And lastly, a spinner pattern. All of which are very, very important throughout the Calabatus life cycle. And certainly during hatch periods, I'll use all of these patterns. The nymph and soft tackle before the hatch gets going. The cripples in the early stages of the hatch and all throughout emergence. The dun I'm often using in tandem with a cripple and the spinner fall uh, a little bit after the emergence when spinners are on the water and trout get focused in on spinner patterns that won't fly away right as they come up to take the fly. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this um, Tying live with whiting, and uh, please check back in as we have more in this series. Thanks. So that concludes the Calabatus Life Cycle series. I hope, hope you've enjoyed this series of patterns. If you like what you see, please subscribe to this page. And note, I've got a number of other patterns listed on this page as well, so... Watch those in addition to the Calabatus Life Cycle series.
Thanks for watching.